With the fifth pick in the 2023 NHL draft, the Montreal Canadiens have selected David Reinbacher, a defenseman, first defenseman off the board. Gil Martin here alongside with our prospects expert, Hadi Kalakesh. And we're joined now by Laura Saba of Locked On Canadiens to break down every angle of the selection. Laura, were you surprised that the Habs went with the top defenseman on many people's boards? Yes and no. This would be the second year in a row that the consensus is not to do the thing. And then the Habs did the thing, right? This is something that we've been hearing about for weeks and weeks that they had an interest in him. And I want to be very, very clear. This is absolutely nothing against David Reinbacher. He seems like a decent player. He's got, you know, he's got a pretty high floor. I have a lot of questions about a ceiling. And Hattie, I know we're going to get into that in a moment. It just feels like the Canadians paid a lobster price for crap is what it feels like at this moment. They drafted him fifth overall when most rankings had him in that, in that 10 to 15 range. The highest that I saw was 11 in my, like myself, most of them had 14, 15. And this is where I thought he should end up. I kind of understand given what Arizona did that, there was a fear of him not being available and he was somebody they really wanted. So I had initially said, well, why didn't they trade down if they wanted a, you know, 10 to 15 ranked player? It's because Arizona wanted him. Right. And you saw that he was on the phone. I know people were having conniptions when, when Kent Hughes was on the phone, when it was the Canadians turn to pick. I wonder if it was just trying to suss out, is that what Arizona wanted? Right. If that's what that, and, and, and if there was any way to sort of dissuade them from it, offering them something else. And then when they saw that wasn't happening, they decided on the pick. And again, I believe they're getting a solid defenseman. I believe they are filling a need. It's just to me, this need could have fill, been filled a little bit later in the draft. Not your, you know, like this is such a deep draft with so much talent and you're taking the fifth pick and you're using it on somebody ranked not fifth. That's all. Hadi, where was he on your board? Um, in all honesty, it was 16th. And let me explain, because he's been higher on a lot of boards. I want everyone watching this, Habs fans or not, how much would you tra- how, what how high a pick would you trade for a second pair defenseman? Because in all in all likelihood, that's what David Reinbacher ends up being. He's rock solid defensively. He's a tremendous skater, um, really good at defending the rush and breaking out the puck, but there isn't much in his offensive game that screams top pair defenseman. And if you're looking at this and you go, yeah, I trade a fifth overall pick for a second round defenseman, a second pair defenseman. I've got a bridge to sell you. I mean, it's just, I, I understand the pick in terms of the logical standpoint of it. There's a need at, at right-handed D in Montreal, um, Reinbacher was definitely not going to be, be available past six. We all know Arizona was going to pick him. I understand the rationale, but you shouldn't make picks based on what others will select. You should make picks based on the best player available. And for me, Reinbacher was not the best player available. More specifically, not the best player available in terms of upside. There were Zach Benson, Matt Vemichkov, who went off the board at seven. Even Ryan Leonard, I would have been fine with. Oliver Moore is another guy I'd throw in there. There were a lot of picks. And if you're looking for a defenseman, for me, Dmitry Simishev is who people think David Reinbacher is. But he's not right-handed. So it's just there are too many variables at this spot at fifth overall that would point you in a different direction than Reinbacher. That the pick really kind of astounds me at fifth. We could all kind of see it coming. We all kind of knew the Habs were going to, like Laura said, we're going to do the thing that everyone was saying, don't do the thing. Um, and they end up doing the thing, and that's where we're at right now. So, Laura, what is the next thing on tap for the Canadians right now? Go off the board and and do one of those high upside picks. Might not have, you know, a high floor. Maybe it's a high risk, high reward. I want to see some risk. I want to see some creativity. I want to see some offensive upside. I want to see a home run. This is not a home run, and that's, you know, they, they, they've still got quite a few picks, even though they, they traded two picks yesterday for, for somebody who's basically a slightly better Jake Evans, up until he proves otherwise. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just not, you know, the last couple of days, I'm not super confident in this front office. Like, I want to see some creativity. All right, well, well, for more on this selection and all of the Canadians' other moves around the draft and free agency, tune in to Locked On Canadians for free on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.